no like pixelating or anything, which okay. I know is what you're yeah. actually asking about. Yes. What a day. What a great day. I need to bring up the light years. Run down. Sam's camera 4K now. That's right. We got, we got production quality in this house. We're basically <laughs> in studio. Oh, we're pros, man. We're pros. pros. I'm still working on a few other things, but I never have enough time. I never have enough time to get it fully going. Oh, it's crazy. On uh, on YouTube, I'm in full studio mode. <laughs> Boom. The go. Draymond tweets are so funny. Somebody said I would be. I would. They showed him a picture of Dr this. Look, this is the one. I'm gonna put it in the chat. I'm fucking crying. Mm -hmm. I guess Different. Warriors win. So, eh. I I think it's. I mean, they did win. That is that is what happened. But a lot of a lot of feelings to process. That's a lot of feelings. Right? And that's a lot why of we're feelings here. to process. So, and it's time. It's time. time to send out a tweet. Get people in here. Dre they're not okay. They're not suspending Draymond. Well, if it isn't, if if someone's going to suspend Draymond, it's not going to be the Warriors, is what you're trying to say. Why would he be suspended? This is a dime a dozen suspension. This is a dime a dozen ejection. Not Whatever. when you're, not we'll when you're Draymond. We will. Yeah, we will save it. Yes, we will save. Let's it. go. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go. Hey guys, presented by Under Armour and Prize Picks, one hundred dollar match on your first deposit with promo code Light Ears. Welcome to Light Ears, Andy Lou. I think that's the game of the season to date. It's been a weird season. At times, I've felt like it's over. It's been on life support. Let's wrap this up. Let's get to next year. Tonight, there were times I felt the same thing. But the Warriors win 101-93 over the Orlando Magic, getting the back-to-back much-needed win in a game where Draymond gets us ejected in, what, the fourth minute, third minute? Uh, just to me, it felt like playoff basketball. It felt like desperation. There was, there was a little bit of everything there. And honestly, I want to start on number 22. Okay. Because the most wow. unlikely hero for me, okay, that was Andrew Wiggins' best game since 2022. Uh, wow, we're starting with your guy. I let's go. I'm in. I'm Am in. I wrong? I, I mean, no. it's like okay. It, it, look, I, I'm bearing the lead. Draymond gets ejected. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about that. <laughs> Everyone saw Steph's reaction. Uh, just a, it felt very dramatic. The whole game felt dramatic. Like I, I texted you. I'm like, dude, if they don't win tonight. Not only are they going to go, not only is the season over, I think they'll free fall. Um, I don't know where they're going after this. I thought it was over. And of all people, uh, Mr. MIA, most of the last two years, Andrew Wiggins came through with a performance I haven't seen since the 2022 playoffs. I, I have to give credit where credit's due. He <sighs> played like a two way all star wing. He did. Oh, yeah my um he deserves he deserves his credit for it that was he he saved the he saved the team season you uh the i'm i'm speechless right now hear, hearing this and you're right and uh i think you are trying to say that Andrew Wiggins saved the season at least so far he saved the season cuz this thing was this thing was uh, careening towards a uh a hellish finish as you were saying he thought he looked like I thought he looked like Jason Tatum was on the floor tonight. <laughs> it felt like they were at TD Garden. It felt like they were at Chase Center. Mm -hmm. You're saying 2022. Felt like this was the NBA Finals. Uh, yeah, man. Franz Wagner doing his little bump and grind stuff in the paint. No chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Paolo Bancaro, yeah. really yeah. not impressive. Like, really can't dribble. Really can't get by, guys. And so I, I just and they put GP two on him, which I thought another guy that saved the game. But back back to Wiggs, really, what it was was offense, right? Like that's really what it is. I think defensively he's been more consistent than he is offensively, uh, even though that's not saying much. But offensively, to me, it was uh, I know the threes went in that saved him in the early fourth quarter. But when he had that spin move, put his arm under Co Anthony, and then had that finish and one, and then he gave a fist pump. Sam, I, I don't think we've seen Wiggins give us a fist pump in uh 
and how long? I don't even know how long. So uh, felt like he, the Warriors were backed into a corner, and uh, and Wiggins brought him out, which was which was awesome to see. Because he's he also played well last night too. That that's the thing. It, it's it's a string now of pretty decent games from from Wiggins. But this one I was mean, the capper. last night was against a team that was shorthanded. Him and Kuminga did whatever they did. Tonight was him creating offense when they needed someone really? other than Steph to create offense tonight was him playing like that second all-star. And I don't know if it's fair to ask him to play like that on a consistent basis, but this team needs a second all-star. Uh, and I mean, they traded Jordan pool. So it's clearly not, you know, Chris Paul's not that guy anymore. Uh, Clay's not that guy anymore. I don't know if Wiggins is, is, but tonight he was tonight. He was the guy who, you know, they gave him the ball in isolation. He made a play. He got. He gets the ball. He goes downhill. He does stuff that he doesn't do on a consistent basis, and he bails the offense out in half court, which is really, in some ways, I feel like that's what we're asking. Because this team, if they can run, they can generate offense. You know, they get the ball moving. Steph will take two bodies. Someone will get an open shot. It's really like the where you feel the lack of a second creators when they're in a half court offense, right? Yeah. And yeah. Andrew Wiggins tonight stepped up in a big way. I, I was surprised by it. I was thoroughly surprised by it. And you know what? They need it. He deserves, he deserves all the credit for it because he's had kind of an inconsistent two years uh, for whatever reason, since the 2022 finals, he has not really been that player, but they found he, he was there tonight when they probably needed it most. Yeah, I mean, they really, I mean, you're right. With Without him, they're not winning this game tonight. Really, probably the biggest part of it outside of Steph. I mean, Clay played well, too. But um, it's the half-court scoring. I think you, you brought up earlier, he has just enough handle. Like, it's not it's not a point guard handle. Uh, we just watched Jalen Williams get to the rack pretty much at will. Like, it's not that type of handle. But he has just enough handle where he can get his own shot. Especially when guys, when they put guys like Wagner on him, that's not gonna, that's not gonna kill his handle. That's not gonna pick him every time. So he can blow by guys like that. He can get by guys like Van Caro. He can get to a step back. He can get open for three. So there's just enough of us of a of an offensive skill here where he's just much more advanced than Kaminga. I mean, part of it is just age, right? And part of like really what it is, and part of it is I think is just just he has a little more variety in this game even when he was a rookie versus someone like Kaminga and so yeah uh, it, he, oh he does oh he's always he always has he, he's got a way better handle and he's got a way better if shot. he does why doesn't the ball go in the hole more often than it's Kaminga. a mental thing with him though look at it the look at the entirety of ten, his career he's way years. more versatile than than, than Kaminga is offensively um also way better defensively but that, that that's 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 neither here nor there it's he, that's why he's their guy, right? That's why he's that guy that scores in the half court. You're not relying on him being going to score in the half court. And again, this is a game that he's played much better than what he has. But this is also not something that we've never seen from him, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, this is not a, oh, Wiggins now can make mid-range jump shots. No, we knew Mitt Wiggins can make mid-range jump shots. Spin, move, finish. We've seen Wiggins can do that, right? Finish and transition. We've seen all this stuff. So, um it is still second scoring by committee, though. I think your point about like him doing consistently is unfair to him because there are going to be games where Clay's going to be that guy, right? There are going to be games where Kaminga's going to be that guy. So I think that's still fine. But yeah, tonight was the night where it was his night to be the second score because they have to do this by committee. But it's, it's not even that because, you know, I'm not going to like lie to people. I don't think they have a second option. Like, no, I don't, I, but what, what matters tonight is they lost Draymond. He, and we'll talk about him shortly, but this had the potential because the Houston Rockets won tonight. The Houston Rockets won, and we were watching it right before this, a gutsy game in overtime against the Oklahoma City Thunder. When Draymond got ejected, this game had the potential to be a throwaway game. And the Warriors lose. And then knowing that Houston wins, now they're tied and they're in danger of just missing the whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing, period. And what I'm getting at here is when Draymond went down, one, I think the whole team deserves credit because I thought it was gutsy the whole way up and down. I mean, Moses Moody gave them great minutes when he played. GP2, you mentioned. Looney, who's had a terrible season. 
uh, he'll you can always count him to play his heart out when it matters. Guy Santos even gave him some good minutes. He was really good tonight. Yeah. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis. I thought I think Trace was able to guard Paulo like fine, which kind of like, Paulo's kind of a center more than he wants to admit it. But that's a different. <laughs> it's a, a different. Star. Yeah, it's a different conversation. But they were looking for someone to step up and be that second scoring option next to Steph, who was you know kind of inconsistent as a, a scorer tonight. And it was Wiggins. Wiggins was the guy who stuck, stepped up. Uh, and you know, the, the credit where credit due on that, you know, like they, if he didn't step up and they just played gutsy, you know, Moses Moody, GP two, Brandon Pajemski defending, playing their heart out, but nobody can create offense. They would have lost 90 to 93. Yeah. That's what would have happened. They yeah. needed someone. They needed someone to provide a little offense and he brought it. Uh, and and I'm going to be honest, look, it, surprising, surprising, unlikely hero, given what we've seen the last two years. Uh, and it's cool. It's cool to see because to me, this is a victory for Steve Kerr. Uh, Steve getting on the podium after every one of their disgusting losses saying, I believe in this team. I believe in this team. I believe in this, you know, like, and uh, it's become like a running joke. You and I just like text each other, like some of the stuff he says, it's like, all that sort of, uh, and uh, you know, I think him holding confidence in guys who've been probably mentally a little fragile and shaken up. That's what you, that's why you do it all year because at some point someone's going to step up a little bit. Yeah. That's where I. That's where I'm not. Sh- the problem is, it doesn't matter what he does. I, I don't know if he was ever going to get this team fully over the hump with the way that he was going to do it. But um, certainly, I think him being the the good guy coach, I think for this particular team is a good thing. And I, I don't know because I think him playing the bad guy coach, maybe we don't get this game. But also, it's like, man, it's game seventy one. <laughs> It took us this long to get here. I'm just, I'm just sad. Look, man, it's a, it's a good, it's a good Wiggins game. I'm just, I'm just saying you don't get, like, I I don't think it's Steve's curse fault for anything about Wiggins. I think it's just Wiggins. I don't think, I don't think Kerr has brought anything out of him by being positive. And I don't think it could have gotten any worse if it had been negative with him because it's was already as bad as it can get. So, um, I, it's a hard, uh, it's a hard tightrope that Steve Kerr is is walking uh, with this team, but it's nice that they could save the really, really this the effort did save them the season. Really, really, you you Houston winning today, you bring it up like that's, I really did. Like I don't know where they're going. Like does saving the season mean they just make the plan and lose? Maybe, honestly, maybe. I'll take but, that though. Better than not making playoffs, right? But what what I do know and I feel very strongly about is if they lost tonight with Draymond pulling what he pulled, it's over. They're gonna go in free fall. You know exactly like that was the type of loss you don't come back from. They probably throw up on themselves in Charlotte on Friday. Uh, and then you know, then Steph's done for the season and it's over, right? Now they I don't want to say the season saved because I don't really know what that means, but they live to fight another day and they got a back-to-back win in Florida. So, you know, well, they live, like, they live to fight and then now they go and they get, they play the Hornets and the Spurs and you know, right. That, that's you're right. Who knows what they save, but hell that's, that's a pretty good, they're, pre- they're pretty 30, damn good week. They're 37 and 34. Everything is in context of what they are. Like, it's not like, well, this win means they're going to win a championship. Like that's not happening. It, but you know, the longer you fight, the more likely you are to have a respectable ending to the season. And I'll take that. I'll take it. At this point, it's it's about trying to move it forward a little bit. Um, should we talk Draymond real quick? Because I I buried it, but it didn't feel right to open on that after they won. What I think was Let's, uh, uh, maybe the would you say that was the most impressive win of the season? I, gutsiest is probably the word I'd use because 90 because they've lost this game probably 20 times this year. Like this is a game they lose every other time they play it. Draymond gets ejected. They fight. They turn the ball over. They throw it up in the fourth, right? This game, at least they had enough conviction to come through at the end. 
I, I don't like best game is probably when they blew out Milwaukee by 30. You know, this to me just this it's, it's like a like sh- showing you have some you have some yeah, fucking this, this like, is, testicles, you know. This this so. is up, yeah, this is up there. I mean, Boston's in there, um, mm-hmm. at home. Oh, gosh, that felt like 20 years ago, but I, yeah, man, there hasn't been many amazing wins this season. That's for <laughs> that's for sure. So th- this is top three, right? A- at the very least. Um, but yeah, let's let's do Draymond. Actually, let's do Draymond before we get to Draymond. Let's do Draymond before we get to Draymond. Light Years Podcast. We are brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two of your favorite uh, two of your player stats and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100x your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can, ten, ten, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with NBA, NHL, college basketball. We are back tomorrow. Entries today on Prize Picks America's number one fantasy sports app. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of the year. We just watched Jalen Green hit that. He hit. You hit more on Jalen Green. You're getting. You're getting 10x at the very least. So get in on the excitement with. Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your latest sports hoops knowledge into serious cash. Uh, Prize Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. Like, for example, if you had gone with Jonathan Kaminga, who sat out, you would have gotten injury insurance. For basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return the second, Prize Picks will have your back, not count that as a loss. Uh, download the app today. Use code LightYears for first deposit match up to $100. Uh, download the app today. Use code light years for a first posit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It is that easy. And we, cool. and we, the light years podcast are brought to you by unified, whether you're a world cast, world-class athlete or a podcaster like me, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and proper, uh, recovery for top-notch performance. Unified healing is a new, and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System or the EE System. If you haven't heard of EE System yet, you want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation, whether you're here in the Bay Area or hundreds of other locations across the globe. Access to a center is easy and affordable. Interested in experience the EE System technology for yourself? Go to unified.com slash light years to learn more and find a center near you. That's UNI, FYD healing.com slash light years no material or testimonials on the unified healing website are intended to be viewed as a medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice diagnosis yeah. or treatment always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen including the ee system let's get to it um yes. so Draymond got ejected about four minutes into the game, I think it was three minutes and 40 some seconds. Uh, and we saw something that we have not seen in, very often, which is Steph Curry's reaction. I want to focus on that. I'm going to put it up here right now. Yes, 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 yes. a lot he, like steph is i know steph like trolls shows emotion plays fun but like he's a pretty even keeled dude pretty even keeled and to get that reaction out of him that's a lot like I'll, I'll let you take it i think the entire fan base knew exactly what was going on the minute you saw his face yeah it it blows my it blew my mind i i don't you know athletes cry um but they don't normally cry unless it's you know winning a championship or 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 losing a big game right losing a playoff game game seven or something like that um this is a march game 
against Orlando Magic, where I by I the way, get... on a team that like probably isn't going anywhere, too. You know, I, like I, as much as we all want to believe, they're probably not going anywhere. It feels like to me that this m- m- was more about Draymond as a human being versus just what happened in the game. This wasn't really about the ejection. It really wasn't about, I don't think it was about this team going anywhere. It, it to me felt more like Steph going, I don't think there's anything I can do about this guy. Like a, as a human being, as a friend of the comments are, 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 are putting it perfectly as a friend. I, I That's what it feels like to me. It, it's not a, it's not a, Oh my God, we're going to lose this game now. Oh my God. I'm not going to be able to play without him today. It's, it's not that at all. Or, Oh my God, we're not going to be able to, make the playoffs because Draymond's out. I, I don't think it's any of that at all. I think it's like, hey, man, that's my guy. And uh, there is something wrong with him that he has not changed one bit after everything that they've been through, after everything that he said. And I think that's part of it. I actually think this this moment with Steph, to me, rep- is so much more meaningful than anything the game was about. Um, yeah, it, it just truly is. I mean, this is this is what I this is what I thought of when I saw it. I'm just gonna throw this up here right now. Okay. This is what I thought of. Is the plane waiting for us to take us to Miami? You know? What it looked like to me. Take it to Miami. <laughs> it felt like it felt like to me it felt like to me and that's for the godfather fans here you know that's what it felt like to me it felt like he would he's honestly realizing like he's never gonna change yeah i have yeah. two choices yeah there you go i can ride it out with my guy yep or i could tell uh mike kirk kent joe any other Lakers in the front office trade like I'm done. I'm done. Do what you have to do to put a winner on the floor. Yep. That's how it felt to me. Yep. That's how it felt to me where it was dealing with. Cause you know, like Steph's been pretty clear, like he wants to compete and he wants to do it with his guys. He really wants to he, – he believes, like, if we find the right mix, we can still do it. Like, I've won four titles with these guys. I want to do it. One of his guys, uh, Clay, is dealing with the unfortunate reality of too many bad injuries. The other guy, Draymond, is just kind of like – he's just looking at it. It's just like, it, you're never going to grow up. You're never going to grow yes. up. Yes. And – I mean, that's a guy who's been in a lot of battles with him, right? It's been in a lot of – say what you want. I, I, the end with Draymond could be even uglier than this. It doesn't change that he's one of the best big game players in the last decade, you know? Like, I get the loyalty. I get – like, you know, when games matter, the best version of Draymond's a guy you want on your team, right? Uh, but to me, it, it kind of came across like a guy who is like – that guy might not be there anymore. Yeah. It, it might be, you know, like I might be holding, I might be just hoping. Yes. Or I might be living in this. I can make him 2018 Draymond again. And that's just I, not going to happen. I, I think that's it. Can we, that that's the part where it's, I think Steph is coming to the realization that, Hey man, this guy's not going to change. You said it earlier. That's mm-hmm. the part. Cause if we break down what I, I know, the comments are kind of going crazy here about like, should he gotten ejected? Should he have got ejected? What actually happened? Dude, just shut the just, just stop. Just stop talking. You've been suspended 15 games. You've been ejected four other times. You've cost this team over 10 wins already this season. You get the first tech, just stop. It, it fair or not has nothing to do with it. It just stop. It's not that hard. You're 35 years old. You're a grown ass man. You are, you have kids. You you're married. What are we doing? Jail Green has kids. So. You have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's true. You have a podcast. <laughs> you're gonna go taken. out here and you're gonna go out here and talk about some bullshit again. 
in the next three pods and we're going to have to listen to you. It's like, uh, grow up. And I think that's the point. That's the part where Steph is sitting there and, and he's, and he's overwhelmed with emotion. Just kind of thinking like, this guy just will never grow up. And, and here's the, here's the other side of it too, which is mind blowing. Um, Draymond's still too good. Like he's still too good and too important for them to say, if we just drop Draymond, we can win games. Now, like Andrew Wiggins, a different story. If they just drop Wiggins this offseason, you can make an argument that they, they might be good enough to still win 48 games next season. But if they drop Draymond, I no mean, we chance. saw what that we saw what that looked like in the first half of the season. Yeah, no chance. They, they made tonight, like that's why I was so impressed with Wiggins tonight. Wiggins absolutely made up for Draymond being not there tonight. So if you get both of them, you're a 54 win team, right? But it's like, but, but, but that, I think that's, that's the problem with this Draymond stuff is it's not like even Clay Thompson, now that we're going through the laundry list of guys that haven't been good enough this season, even Clay Thompson has not been as good as Draymond. You can argue at certain points where it's like, okay, they could win without Clay. I'm not saying that they would, but they could with Draymond. You can't make that argument. No, there's, just, I mean, there's no argument. You need it. He, he's a flawed player. Uh, he drives you insane. And your record is what it is when he plays versus when he doesn't. I'm, it's just, it's not complicated. They are, they win. They're a non playoff playing team with Draymond, and they're basically a non playoff team without him. Like, that's just the reality of the matter. He's <sighs> that good. He does so many little things to help you win. But, you know, we're talking about it and we're projecting that Steph might be done with him. And that's really like the human emotion I felt in that moment. And yet post game, <laughs> what do we got? You see, you see post game, post game, <laughs> who's so going to, to greet him? Draymond's there. Uh, I think this is part of the reason I thought this win was so important. Oh my god! I don't think Steph greets Draymond with positivity and is ready to move on if they lose today. I think if they lose today, they have an internal like. That's why I said the whole thing falls apart because that was a stupid fucking play by Draymond. And not even a stupid – like, just grow up, man. Don't argue. With the, you, they're going to tee you up. You know they are. I can't stop with this picture. You just and, and he gets ejected. And if they don't win this game, the entire locker room – but I don't give – I don't care about the locker room. Number 30, who's the only man who matters in the locker room, is going to look at him like, dude, you just ruined our season. Again, you've ruined our season for the third time in one season. How do you ruin the season that many times? That's what he's going to say. But since they won, that's kind of amped. They're all hyped around Wiggins because Wiggins played in a way he hasn't played in two damn years. Uh, and, and you know, Draymond's like, I'm sorry, bro. And, and stuff's like, it's okay. I got you. And, and that's exactly – it's so funny to me because it's that simple. Like, this falls in so many different ways. If they don't win tonight's game, am I wrong? I don't know. I it, like, is he smiling post game? It, it, do we get this amazing visual of Draymond looking like uh, Michael Jackson in Thriller when his eyes are like turning into a zombie? Like, do we get this? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. The, is is Steph even happy? We don't even see Steph's face. I mean, is, is Steph just? Is he just doing this because they won and he's and, and Draymond's there dapping him up? You know, in, in the post games, Steph, of course, doesn't throw Draymond on the bus, but he's kind of like, hey, man, Draymond's got to get it together, right? Which is as close as, as Steph will ever say to, to throwing someone under mm -hmm. the bus. But, yeah, I it, it feels like we're going in on this this tiny thing, but it's, isn't this emblematic of the Warriors season and last couple of seasons? Like... People are saying uh, you're making too much. of this. actually literally the comment saying right now, like you can make too much of this, but it's not. This has cost the Warriors so much through the entirety of this last decade plus, right? 2016, 2019, 2022, 
And now 2023, 2024, same thing. Multiple times where Draymond's been in the middle of <laughs> what do you what do you want whatever you want to call it. And it always ends with him being good enough and he will be back. And looking at this picture right now of Draymond trolling us with that smile, he knows exactly where the camera is. It is is him telling us that hey, Draymond will be back on Friday. He will be back and he will be very good. And the Warriors will win that game. And they will sit there after the game and go, yeah, all right, we are back. Up, he's gonna lock up Grant Williams and Nick <laughs> Nick Richards. Nick Richards and Mark and Mark Williams. Is he on the team? You know what I mean? Like and, and they will come back and, and Draymond will tell us again how much that this moment was the uh was the uh was the pivot point. Right, this got Wiggins back to what he was. Right, yeah, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna on the pod and say, "I I felt so bad about what I did, and so, I was just so proud of my guys. So proud of my guys." And on and on and on, and they will do that dance again. And yeah, man, I, I look. Even I was a little dramatic on it. I was like, "Hey, man, are they gonna just? Is he just gonna be gone? Is he gonna be gone? We'll never see him in this rest of the season." It's like, you know what, Andy, you should have been smarter because how many times have we lived through this Draymond stuff, and how many times? Have the Warriors come out on the other side of it better? Maybe? Sort of? They certainly survived it. They always come out of the just Draymond stuff surviving it. So looks like we'll get that again. I think the difference, no doubt, Sam, I think the difference with this stuff is I don't think Warriors fans are, are unanimously behind Draymond. I think 2016 they were. I there... think 2019, I think with KD still a little bit. I think – with Jordan Poole and people aren't really. as endeared with the, yeah. the act, you yeah. know, it's tiresome. It's yeah. uh yeah. yeah. It's, it's, your, it's your friend who acts like they're still 21 when they're 35. Like it's not, it's not cute, bro. It's not, it's not funny. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to go over to the playback stream. If you want to call in, we're going to take some callers right now. How do you feel about that, Andy? Should we get some goons? I'm curious. Sure, what, I'm curious what people think tonight. Oh, and oh, gonna let it... oh, wait, before the goons, don't forget the Under Armour segment. Don't forget the Under before the goons. Before We've the already goons. done Under Armour. Uh, you mean the read? Okay. Game of the week. Under Armour game of the week. Oh, maybe we don't have to do it? Okay. All right. I'm just saying. Oh, Are we not doing Are we not? Ooh, podcast. This is this is on me, just to be fair, guys. Don't don't take it the wrong way. This okay, is cool. Me. <laughs> Somebody's gonna take the picture down. <laughs> uh, um no. You're looking at Dream on Green forever. Is 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 what you guys have done. Yeah, no, no. I mean, you are correct. That is why this week's Under Armour game of the week is you know, Warriors against the Spurs on Sunday. Could be a big one. Dude, man. I, I I think I think this Warriors Spurs game um, is going to decide the season. No, it is our under. I mean, every game starting season <laughs> right now, right? <laughs> it is our under our match of the week because uh, it's the end of the road trip. They got a chance to go four zero if they beat Charlotte. Um, Victor Wembanyama uh, is he going to play? Probably going to play. Uh, looks like he's the best player in the world. Um, I know they avenged their last loss to them. Uh, at home, but it'd be nice if the Warriors, with one of the weakest schedules in the NBA, can just go out and just smack a team. Because um, mm -hmm. they got Houston next week, so you everybody knows what our Under Armour matchup of the week is going to be next week. But <laughs> look at this picture of of Steph and Wemby. This Bro, is he's just so big. He's just so tall, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. No, it's, it's so it's our Under Armour matchup of the week. Steph Curry makes you believe he can do anything. The Curry oh, Elevens yeah. bring it fast positive and bright i'm going off the top of my head buddy did you memorize that did you bright memorize the read wow oh. to a future new generation of ballers are saying i didn't memorize it for, i didn't memorize it perfectly i apologize tim i'm sorry i'm making you do some work now <laughs> no, no, I, I thought I thought you were gonna go. New generation of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is fast, exciting, positive, and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry Elevens are perfect for the committed and casual baller. Step into Steph's eleventh signature shoe 
the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspirations from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Do your thing, change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curries available, currybrand.com. And for the record, Andy and I both have Curry 11s. Ooh. By so the way, this isn't this isn't this is this is no lying here. And uh, we've appreciated having UA as our sponsor all season. Means the world to us. Currybrand.com, by the way, is uh is uh hit a bunch of threes this week, basketball tournament. Shout out to Steph. Shout out to Bruce Lee, Steph, crossover. <laughs> Currybrand.com. It's where we live. Night night. Let's go. Nice. Nice. Cool. Let's get to the goons. All right. Will's been waiting patiently. We're gonna we're going to order. We're hitting lead off with our guy Will. Guys. What's up, Will? How you doing? I'm good. It's been a minute. It has been a minute. Oh, man, uh, I just wanted to get my uh, thoughts off on this whole <laughs> situation. First of all, great game. I wanted to say shout out to our, our two rookies for really uh, grabbing those boards tonight, um, especially Trace. I think he had 14. Um, yeah. But uh, against a big team like like uh, the Magic, we needed that. But <laughs> when it comes to this whole Draymond situation man i have to say like i fall into the camp of of our fan base of people who believe that like i don't believe that this team can't win if we don't have draymond green on this team like i just don't anymore it's not he's not the player he was even in 2018 hell he's not even the player he was in 2022 and the lack of self-awareness the lack of maturity this guy is 34 years old and he acts as though he can continue to just do this stuff and get away with it. He just continues to write fucking checks that that <laughs> Steph continues to have to cash, man. And I'm just over it. I don't see how the basketball gods are ever going to reward our team, bro, for continuing to enable this behavior. Like, and let's be honest about it. Like, they have just continued to turn – turn a blind eye to this time and time again. We lost in 2016 because of him. We our season was cooked last year because of him and the whole stuff that he did with um with a uh, pool, we know that. And then he's ruined this season like you guys said like three times over in one season. Like <laughs> this guy is a cancer to this team. I don't care what he does defensively. I don't care how much of a the the dynamic tandem uh, pick and roll duo they are it's just it is it is asinine to continue to see this dude just continue to do what he's doing and act like we're just gonna you know roll the ball out there again on Friday and you know he's gonna go out there he's gonna play his ass off and then all will be well he'll put out a little podcast and and do that do that picture tells it all though that, that that picture you guys had is insane i was just like it was giving thriller michael jackson like you know exactly just, like, like anyways um but good to good to see you guys man i'm hoping appreciate to, uh, you as always pop back in more uh but yeah <laughs> nasty work man look at that look at that oh <laughs> uh, if if you're gonna if you're gonna be that controversial you might as well go all the way and make fun. us Make us uh, just like laugh. By the way, this 30, whenever, like years from now, the 30 for 30 on this team is going to be absolute cinema. Well, they're going to have to make like a 15 part doc with with what's been happening with with this team through the years. I mean, geez. The crazy part is like when they did the Steph doc, they only did it up to a certain point, which I was a little disappointed because. I thought they were going to do all of it, which is why I was like, why are you doing a documentary when you're still in them? It, it was more, it was more him in college. Right. But, um, but this warriors one that they're going to do is going to be. Yeah. They could just do one just on Draymond. I don't know. That's why the last dance works because if you wait long enough, you can let everything settle and decide your angle, but you do it in real time. Yeah, it, I don't we'll like the real time. Yeah, I don't like the real time. You know, I I, I know LeBron's I do and gonna I, do a big I, one. Obviously, I do and I don't. Obviously, I watch it in real time, but obviously, taking time away from it gives you better. So, uh, all right, let's get our Tatian up here. 
they take a trip to Vegas without some bullshit going on, bro. Like, what happened? I was literally <laughs> on a flight, and then I see Draymond get ejected. Like, how? Did he really just call a ref a ban for no reason? Like, seriously? Did Was that the whole reason why Draymond got ejected this game? Like, I'm just curious. Like, what the hell happened? Is like, is this a man-child just getting out of character again or something else entirely? Correct. Correct. Uh, nah, he, all right, man. Just know, like, <laughs> he, it's a it classic Draymond. It's not that he was wrong on the call. It's that just no situational awareness. Like, they're going to kick you out, bro. You're not going to bully them into giving you what you want. And what happened? All right, man. So, the I ref, think... there, by the way, the ref actually tried to walk away. Another ref came over and pulled the ref away. And Draymond yeah, just kept going and going. Huh? I, I just, I just, I, I look, I, I thought the refs were kind of trying to hold back. And I look, man, Draymond deserved it. So I, I know I hate refs as much as anyone else, but good riddance. You probably, you, it's not more than me personally. And even <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> like, keep in mind, this is me saying that when you trade Draymond, your entire structure for your rebuild is fucked regardless of the situation so i it's going to be hellish without draymond as you mentioned time and time again as he keeps on punching people in the face and whatnot but you know i anyway anyway let's just figure out what the hell is tire Ty, Ty eason or whatever that fucker's name is in houston <laughs> because apparently he's saying warriors come out and play I'm like bro you you're not who are you? You barely even made it to the league, dog. And you're trying to say Warriors come out to play like it's like <laughs> Wait, isn't he not even playing? Hey, it's really good though. He's a rotation player, yes. But also it's like, come on, dog. You're talking about like playing material you... where you're not even that good. And it's like, oh my goodness, bro. Have you guys he is so fucking lucky? He's so fucking lucky. I love Jalen Green. And it's only because of one reason. <laughs> Oh, have man. you guys seen the Warriors? Like, have you seen the movie? No, I've not. Never. I have not. I just only know the meme. Wow. wow. You guys yeah. should watch the movie. Yeah. It's a fun watch. But the irony of him saying you know, Warriors come out and play, the guy says that before he gets fucking wasted. And, and <laughs> so it's like, it's not actually the That's own really you good. think it is. That's it's really not good. the own you think it is because, <laughs> like, he, he, they're like the bad guy, and the Warriors end up getting him. At the end, That's really so. good. That's really good. <laughs> oh, man. That is well done. That was. Well oh, done. this is that's. Beautiful. But the meme's pretty. The meme's pretty cool. There's no way around it. Like it's a, uh, it's a fun one. I I know you guys remember they used to play it all the time at Oracle, right before Monte Ellis would come out and yes. miss a game with yes. us. That I do know. That I do. Well. <laughs> Come on now. It's a random movie, but it's fun. Anyway, that's enough of that. Challenging them to a fight, he ends up losing. So, you know. But but hey hey get it off Tar Eason. I know you never saw the movie and you I was gonna say you think Tar Eason never watched it? You think? <laughs> no, nah, he's just going off the meme. So I mean the only the only matchup that really matters is Dylan Brooks and Draymond Green. That's the only matchup oh, that matters. My Lord. It's April fourth, is it? Immediate ejection. Yeah, no, it's a <laughs> week from so most people are probably listen to this on Thursday. It's a week from Thursday. I think it's next Thursday. Oh yeah, man, yeah, this is gonna is. be cinematic. It's good. This we got good. a we got a favorable Warriors. Both teams honestly have a good schedule to get there. So I don't think things are gonna change till we get there. Like just looking at it, the Warriors have the Hornets, the Spurs. All right, Dallas, that's a tough one. That's three games. Let's say they go two and one. And then the Houston Rockets have let's pull this up real quick. Gonna delay my time. Real quick, the Rockets play the Jazz, the Mavericks, the Timberwolves. Ooh, that's tough. And then the Warriors. So, like, really, hey, man, think... they 
they they beat the Thunder in overtime. So at this point, I just say fuck it, fuck everything at this I point. Think it's, it's all chaos. It's gonna still it's be all a, chaos. Like, it's gonna be a. It's gonna matter. I don't think either team's pulling away. Is my Who point. has the tiebreaker right now? What what is the Warriors? Uh, is it the Warriors, dude? They won both of them. It's just the fact that we're we're having to win the third matchup in this situation is so insane. It just speaks to how god awful this season has been. Yeah, well, good. That's a great that's a great call. Put them away. Put them away. It's a, a great call. I right, appreciate you, Tashion. Enjoy Vegas. Well, the Warriors have a 2-0 tiebreaker, and so they don't technically need this to keep the tiebreaker. Um, no, but is this that sh- correct? It, is that correct? Correct, correct. But it's not like they have enough wins to be. No, no, no I, I understand. I understand. But I'm, I'm saying just it doesn't matter if they both finish tie. Whatever, that's fine. Whatever. You're it's correct. Gonna be a the Warriors will own the tiebreaker no matter the result next week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's power through. God, my hair is disgusting. I can't wait to get haircut. We got more goons. Oh, Tyler was at the game tonight in the chat. Love that. Oh, Tyler. I got to get Tyler up here next. Ken, what's up? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. What are we cooking? Hamburgers and rice. Yeah, Love it. Go. Thank- there you go. Back from the beach. It was awesome weather yesterday. Super nice. And that's good. I didn't get to watch the uh, game against uh, Miami, but it sounds like that was pretty great, huh? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I was just kind of sort of watching this game, and then Draymond got ejected. I was like, oh, well, now it's actually interesting, and I'll watch the game. It sounds fun. So totally paid attention after that. Loved what I saw. I just, you know, team effort, team effort, and uh, really good. Personally, I think the Warriors should just tell Draymond he's suspended for the next game. Just not a league suspension. Just pay him. Say, we can handle Charlotte without you. And if we can't handle Charlotte without you, then then we don't need you next year anyway. So, you know, just 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 let him send him to San Antonio. Like make him go to San Antonio and say, wait for us in San Antonio. We'll see you there in three days. Work on your shot. <laughs> Appreciate you, Ken. Have a great evening, my man. Hey, uh, make some local moco for us, all right? Oh, yes, yes. All right, we're getting Tyler up here. Tyler hit me up earlier. I believe he was there live. Oh, hell yeah. Is, is it going to be Tyler on the left or Tyler on the right? Tyler on the right is jacked. Oh, it's Tyler on the right. You're muted, brother. But How's yeah, it going, you guys? How's it going? Good. Did you go to the game tonight? Yeah, I was there with my dad. Uh, moved to Orlando like three years ago, gone to the game every year. Hell First yeah. time they fucking won in Orlando. Nice. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. How stressed were you when Draymond got ejected? What was the anger I'll, level? I'll be honest. I wasn't in the arena yet. I was waiting for my tickets to process outside. Oh my. <laughs> he got ejected like 20... so early you weren't even yeah, in your seat. Exactly. I heard it over the speaker in the arena. My dad's like, he got ejected. I'm like, no, no, no. I checked the gameplay. It was a personal foul on Draymond or something. Nah, ejected. I mean, it looked like he was just, what, fucking talking to the refs and just wouldn't shut up? I mean. Correct. Uh, surprise, surprise. Yeah. But I, the what got me was Steph in tears on the Twitter. I saw Andy put that out. That's – and I, I apologize because I just tuned in. So if you guys were talking about that a little bit earlier. Okay. But, uh, Go for it. Man, like – Steph is like the 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 responsible kid in the room with all these like it's like the kindergarten teacher with all the kids running around and Steph has to just deal with it and like make sure they get A's on the report cards and like pass the class. I don't know if people have passing grades in kindergarten anymore, but <laughs> what the hell, man? Uh what'd you guys think about that? Emotional night. That's what that's where I'm at. It it, it felt like if they didn't win tonight, I think the season was over. I think it's just cooked. I, who knows where the season's going, but it, it would have been like Draymond gets ejected. They lose a disgusting game to Orlando. Houston ends up winning probably their game of the season. It, it, it All signs would have pointed to like, we're done, we're cooked. And now they fight, they live to fight another day. And I don't know if you saw the image of Draymond post game, but 
How how yeah. was the crowd, by yeah. the way? How, yeah. how it felt like there were a lot of Warriors. It seemed pretty yeah. loud. Yeah, it, it trickled in like Warriors fans in the beginning for sure, and then at, it just kind of happens with Magic game Magic games at the end is that you don't really tell that there's fans in the arena until like there's three minutes left. Orlando has some great fans. No, but what I could really tell was that like first off, Wiggins was actually playing like he wanted to be on the court, which was a huge win, and I was like, holy shit! Like he's actually like making some effort. It was like the whole team actually wanted to be on the court that night. I don't know if it was Draymond getting ejected that like lit the fire or Steve Kerr being motivated as hell in the locker room. Probably not that one, but <laughs> it was, uh, it was nice to show them at, like they actually wanted to play some real basketball and, and Steph brought him home at the end. Like yeah. no. they, and like shout out to Moses Mo- Mo- Moody too. Like keep like had some, incredible effort plays of offensive rebounds diving for loose balls he kept him in that too Wigan saved him Steph brought him home like you couldn't ask for more and I think that's a good point like season kind of over after a game like this yeah okay. we are back and we I do think I do, I do think to your point like wherever the season goes I loved Moses Moody Trace Jackson Davis uh Pajemski like those dudes mm-hmm. we'll see what they end up being over the next five years but they, they play hard. They're winning players. They're going to carve roles out. Like they, they, If this was a young team with guys who are like their heads are too egotistic, they would have quit on the game. Those dudes, those dudes care about winning, and I, I like each and every one of them. Like It would suck to give them up in some way or another. Yeah, like it doesn't change the fact that the season is kind of is what it is at this point. You know, sure. like They're not going to go on some crazy title run, but like – I don't know. I've, I've followed this team for a long time. It's good to like have these guys deliver like every once in a while. It feels good. It was a nice satisfying win, but look, there's still, there's still things to take away from the season that don't, uh, you know, it's, it's not the best, but I'll leave it at that. But also I forgot to say, I called, I, this is my first time ever on playback. I downloaded it tonight, but I called for a voicemail last year when they came to Disney world. That was me. So uh, oh, I remember that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I didn't hear awesome. any whispers of them going through on the teapots this year, but uh, oh. yeah. So judging by Draymond's face, I think he left live four hours before tip off. So um, yeah. <laughs> that's what happens to get the Miami back to back. Tyler, appreciate you calling more often. Great. great stuff. Good, guys. Appreciate you. That's so funny. Uh, I mean, get Will Decker up here real quick. Because he tried to call him before. And Will's our guy. Remember we saw Will right before the game? Our guy. My Love guys, him. what is good? Sir. What's up, brother? How, how hyped are we right now? I know that win got the juices flowing. <sighs> guy was Dude, I, I am hyped. Don't get me wrong. Anytime I see Steph clutch buckets, it just is the greatest thing ever. My goat for infinity and beyond. <laughs> but freaking Draymond, dude. Like, I came on the same podcast two weeks ago, and I was like, he, he, he steps over his boundaries every time, but I always end up forgiving him. I'm always back in. This is like, bro, I feel like it's back to the unhinged Draymond we saw at the beginning of the year, man. We're like, do you remember he does the go bear thing? He comes back. He has that Phoenix game where he didn't get ejected, but he's like looking at the officials like, please do like, please say something to me right now. Like I'm going to get ejected. And then he did. Um, we play Phoenix again. And then he does the spinning back fist. So like, I, he, he, I mean, the thing we saw with Miami where he pretty much choked out Patty Mills last night, didn't get a call for it, and then this now in a, a must-win game, I'm worried, fellas. I am freaking worried. So we got that going. I'm not saying this is a title-winning team, but, man, like I want to see as far as we can go. You know what I mean? So that's it, tough. But I don't know. Steph crying tonight, man, it, it makes me feel like it, the end is near, which is tough for me as a, a Dubs fan. Uh, every dynasty ends in an ugly way, but I, I don't know. Wiggins driving to the basket tonight and dunking. Like, I can't remember the last time I saw that, period. <laughs> so, like, 2022, baby. Yeah, it's yeah. been since the finals, pretty much. So, dude, it's just a lot of emotions, like you said. It just – with Steph tearing up like that, I've never seen that in sports where just some guys is just that emotional during the middle of the game. So, yeah. happy for the win. Um, let's keep rolling, baby. Back to backs in Florida are tough. I think Draymond may have been like, I'm just too hungover from Miami. I'm going to get out of here early right now, <laughs> but we'll take the dub as it is, man. Like 
38 and 34. Let's see how far we can take this. Thanks, fellas. Sure. Appreciate Thanks, you, Will. He's got a good, good voice. We good? Yes. We're done? We, get, we got one more caller. We got one guy. We got to get Bud up here. I'm going to give Bud a chance. He hasn't called in before. Okay. I love new callers. I, don't, I hate to leave new callers on red, wrong, <laughs> unheard. Like, Bud, what's like, up, man? Unless this tech doesn't work, in which case we'll be done. No, no, I think I got a good feeling. I got a good feeling. Yeah. You guys hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, what's up, man? Cool. Now, I listen a lot on uh, YouTube after when I wake up in the morning, but really much love. Appreciate, appreciate it, guys. your takes. But um, no, I think it's all, you know, Draymond's got his podcast career after this, so it's all kayfabe. <laughs> it's all kayfabe right now. So my theory is he's got a bad back. You know, he's he's... Pat, you know, he's over 30. So you guys know how that is. It's like, Dang. he's got to find, re you know, he's why put on the scouting report that you're going to be resting and the leaks, you know, cracking down on that this year. So do your little thing, get kicked out early. You get to test the league, see what's see what they'll tolerate in the playoffs. And it's like the classic baseball manager move. Get everyone pumped up, you know, you get kicked out, you get a night's rest and just a little injury conspiracy theory thought, but you know, Draymond's Appreciate. building his brand, and I think that's uh, what he's up to. So, hmm. Hmm. This is all <laughs> deep fake. Appreciate it, buddy. Keep it. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great evening, my man. Uh, Going to marinate um, on that one the rest of the night. Um, you know what's, uh, what's funny about uh, the Draymond stuff is you, you think he's laughing it up with Steph and Clay right now? On the on the flight over to uh, Charlotte, or actually, no, they're probably staying in in Orlando tonight. But Not they're laughing it up. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I think they are. I don't know. I think they are. I, 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 well, I because they won, probably. Yeah, winning cures all. That's a, that's the funniest thing. That's why. That's why I was just like, it's such a big game because they lose. Steph might take his own private plane. You're done. Done. I need I need 24 hours away that's, from everyone. That's LeBron right there. You guys might yeah. not get me. You guys might not. Well, no, they're going to Charlotte actually. So Steph's got a home home game. Yeah. All right. Appreciate everyone. Have a great evening.